All right, YouTube, it is an early, well, very early for me. What time is it? 6.48 in the morning in Louisville, Colorado. Just left the house. Behind me, I got the prancing, I'm in the prancing moose, heading on another Ref Life adventure to Dallas, Texas, Dallas suburbs. I need to be in Frisco, Texas, Friday. Um, with a referees meeting for the MLS Next Cup, which is the highest level of boys youth academy soccer in the United States. It is their national championship. It's called the uh, MLS Next Cup. Uh, 32 teams in four different age, gra age brackets are playing down there for the national championships in a single elimination tournament. Plus there's a side showcase for teams that are eliminated and some of the other teams that didn't qualify into the top 32. So coming down to work that as a soccer referee, lots of running. Uh, that that tournament starts on Saturday the 17th, but between now, Thursday, and Friday, I'm just driving to Frisco, Dallas, Texas. So uh, we're heading out of Denver, leaving early so we can kind of skip the rush. Denver is celebrating the Nuggets National Ch Championship, the NBA Championship uh, today. They're having their parade. I'm not sure what time that is, but I will probably be somewhere closer to southeastern Colorado, Oklahoma. Maybe even Texas by the time that happens. I'm not sure what time of day they're doing it. But I have no idea where I'm driving to today. Never seen most of this. I drove a bit of it before I headed over into Kansas on the last trip to Dallas for the Dallas Cup back in March. Um, but this is going to be new. I'm just going to take the direct route. It's about a 12 and a half hour drive to staying on Highway 287 from Lyman straight down. I think it goes almost all the way into Dallas. I think at some point I get on one of the Dallas Turnpikes, highways, something or others, but almost right there. It takes me straight in heading uh, southeast um, from Lyman. Uh, but anyway, that's the plan. I have learned from my last trip on this because there was uh, out in the hinterlands, not a single Starbucks. So I brought the backup coffee, the good coffee from home. I got my regular coffee, one cup. That's all I had on the Dallas Cup trip back in March. But this time I have the backup. No stopping in weird little towns for bad coffee um, or no truck stop coffee because that stuff is gasoline that stuff is terrible anyway heading out uh ragnar is loaded up i got a sleeping bag in here i'm gonna vagabond it again welcome to the ref life you, this could be you you could be doing this and traveling regionally or doing whatever you want to do as a referee for good soccer matches um yeah I'm, I'm sure that's a good selling pitch is uh sleep in your car or travel across the country um but it's kind of an adventure as well so getting out on the open highway and seeing stuff i haven't seen before even though it might be a little bit of a boring drive this time we'll see We'll try to keep it interesting for you. I don't know what else to say. Welcome to eight o'clock in the morning on Thursday. Interstate 70 heading east. Uh, we're about 85 miles into this trip. I don't remember the last town I drove through. I think I saw Lowland, Lowland and Agate, I think. I wasn't really paying attention, but I'm almost directly 90 degrees to your view on the right. I think I'm actually heading, I'm heading southeast right now because directly to my right is Pikes Peak. I can still see it on the distance, barely seeing any mountains. Pikes Peak kind of viewable. There's a little low valley there to see through. But it, what strikes me out here is it is very, very green. I have never seen eastern Colorado this green ever. We've had a lot of rain. Matter of fact, all of those little cottonwood drainages that have bridges on them, I've never seen water in any of those. All of them had water. I don't think you call it, I don't think they're creeks. I think they're washes. Maybe they are a creek and a flash flood or something, but um, I've never seen water moving. And I didn't really see flowing water, but they all have water in them, um, in those cottonwood wash drainages with bridges, which is always funny because I've always thought they look really, really sandy. Um, but that's kind of interesting. Yeah, nothing's going on. It's pretty quiet out here. The sun's getting warmer. So it tells me it's 63 degrees outside. Um, cruising into green pastures and blue skies. What an easy start to the day at mile 87. All right, we'll check in in about an hour. Be safe, YouTube. Good morning, YouTube. We are just a few minutes shy of 9 a.m. 150 plus miles into this 
road trip adventure and we are coming up on a town with the best name never heard of it in Colorado until I made this trip in March but it's got a great name this is Wild Horse Colorado Wild Horse Colorado had never ever ever heard of it until March driving to the Dallas Cup and now here in mid-June, driving down to Dallas again. Wild Horse, there it is, it's on the sign on the right. Hopefully you can read that. Yeah, let's check it out. I'm here to serve YouTube. I drive through Wild Horse, Colorado, so you don't have to. Although it is still pretty nice out. Uh, it's still very green, not windy. There's like a cloud with some rain in the distance. We got a little bit of a mist back there a little bit. Nothing on the road really. Just cruising, we are, look at that. 13 miles from Kit Carson, Colorado. I think that was one more little street up here and we will be out of Wild Horse. I think we are almost done. At this crossroad, this caution, there's a crossroad here. You know, there might be cars here, be careful. Oh, that's how you get to Flagler, who knew? All right, so according to this, County Road 9, I don't even know what county I'm in. County Road 9 is dirt on the right, look to be dirt on the left. We are out of Wild Horse, Colorado. That was it. I'm here to serve YouTube. I drive through Wild Horse so you don't have to. Although I will say this, Highway 287 in Colorado, this highway is phenomenally smooth. This is so nice. All right, be safe. Welcome to 10 o'clock Thursday morning, a little over three hours and 224 miles into this trip with the cruise control set on the speed limit cruising along just left Lamar Colorado across the Arkansas River I think it's telling me entering Oklahoma in about 75 miles so about another hour we'll be in Oklahoma a little over an hour uh, yeah not a lot to see it is drying out like you can see sagebrush now although the sagebrush right now is very very green everything's still very verdant but uh, it has switched to sage matter of fact that's sage street right there how, how appropriate well timed a uh, beautiful day. We ran, it sprinkled a little bit back there, like a half hour ago. Cruising through. This highway is amazingly smooth. It's very, very, it's new or well maintained. I'm thinking it's brand new. Um, and cruising, but yeah, definitely turned into sage. The Arkansas River looked much smaller than I was expecting it to be. And having fun. All right, tune back in a little bit. I'll see you in about an hour as we get to the Oklahoma Pan Handle. All right, YouTube, if I time this right, we are about ready to cross from Colorado on Highway 287 in southeastern Colorado into Oklahoma. I think I timed it perfectly. That's the Welcome to Colorado sign on the oncoming traffic at the north. Yep, Welcome to Colorado. Oklahoma. Whew. We are at essentially four and a half hours into the trip. I went a little long just to time that to the state line. We are now in Oklahoma. Uh, we are literally 300 miles. It just rolled over 300 miles, uh, 300 and a half miles from home. So uh, yeah, rolling through four and a half hours into this trip. A long way to go. It's telling me I still have about 500 miles to go. So uh, yeah, it's a long one. Um, interesting note, I don't know what county that was back in Colorado, um, in the southeastern corner on Highway 287, but the last two cities I drove through, I think, uh, the one was Springfield, which I've never heard of before, and then the other one was Campo, I believe, or Champo, Campo, something like that. Both cities had, uh, city limit signs, and it just said town limit. It didn't say a population or an elevation. Look, almost every city I've ever seen in Colorado shows the elevation of the city, like Denver's 5,280, the Mile High City. Um, those just said town limit. I've never seen that ever in Colorado. Matter of fact, I was actually curious if I was already in Oklahoma. So anyway, that's my update. It's very green. Uh, there are yucca, and I don't know if you have the resolution to see it while we're driving through at the speed limit, but they have yellow blooms. Uh, these aren't quite blooming. The ones back in um, Colorado on the other side had in patches big yellow blooms on them. So uh, it's kind of pretty. Lots of yucca and some sage, but this is mostly yucca through here. All right, I will give you an hour update. Be safe. All right, YouTube, we are an hour five 
And if I time this right, I'm kind of shocked because Oklahoma, the western panhandle, I mean, we're at like 41 miles. I thought it'd be somewhere between 60 and 100 miles tall or, you know, north to south. But apparently it's just barely over 40 because uh, Waze is telling me I'm about ready to enter Texas. And I got to tell you, back there, except for the first 10 miles, um, Oklahoma was pretty boring. Uh, the first 10 miles was kind of kind of cool. Had some turns in it, some hills and kind of rock formations and stuff, kind of neat. Uh, but about 20 miles in, I saw a sign that said, Donald J. Trump Highway. And I'm not gonna kid you, um, you're not gonna believe this, but I think it might, you know, it, it could be appropriately named because to be, except for that first five, 10 miles of, uh, I think we're in Texas. Except for that first five to 10 miles, there it is, Texas! Except in that five, first five to ten miles of Oklahoma, it was nothing but a large expanse of nothing. So, properly named. And uh, heads up to the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, hell no. Didn't stop. Ain't spending a penny anywhere in there. All right, YouTube. I'm on. On my way. Be safe. It is hour six of today's adventure trip to Frisco. Living the rough life. We are now 412 miles from Boulder County, Colorado, driving south, cruising. It's very verdant, very green. More green than I remember last time when I was here a month and a two, a month and a half, two, two and a half months ago. A month and a half ago, mid-April, two months ago. Um, I am approximately 20 some miles north of Amarillo, Texas, coming in and it is very verdant. Um, it is a totally different temperature down here. It's climbing the whole way south. Uh, we was 87 and a couple miles ago when I looked and I just looked down, it's 89 outside. So the temperatures are climbing up. We are at 412 miles. I have stopped once at Two Buttes Rest Area in southeastern Colorado and haven't gassed up yet. Gonna get gas somewhere in Amarillo. Gonna grab something to eat, make a few phone calls for the day job work and keep on the road. But it is a beautiful day out. We are making great time. Uh, Waze is telling me I have less than 400 miles to go, 393, and about five and a half more hours of drive time. So uh, yeah, we'll see where we end up stopping tonight. Stick along, it's gonna be a grand Texas adventure. Hello YouTube, heading out of Amarillo, Texas. Left Amarillo about, I don't know, five, 10 minutes ago, heading east on 287 southeast i guess it is but right now it feels pretty much just due east uh quite a bit of traffic though as you can see it just pulled out uh, kind of just uh, interesting highway 75 miles an hour but it's divided wow he's getting pushed around by some wind um heading out stopped in amarillo got some food got some gasoline got over 28 miles per gallon on that tank of gas that is great for the loaded up well lightly loaded up i guess ragnar v70 had some fun driving and uh, just kind of put it on cruise control and making my way across here it's a windy day there's a lot of dust in amarillo it's very green very green there's standing water in these pastures what a beautiful day all right i feel good i got fueled up for the car fueled up for myself Waze is telling me 344 more miles to go a little under five hours and I will be in Fort Dallas, excuse me, Fort Worth, Dallas, Texas. Probably gonna stop in Wichita Falls today. I think it's only about three hours up here, something like that. So uh, three, three and a half hours. So that'll probably be today's end of the journey today and then just finish it up tomorrow. So I will check in soon. Be safe, YouTube. Hello, YouTube. I think I might've skipped one. This is like hour nine. It's almost five o'clock in Central Time Zone, Texas. This is the Kirkland exit. It looks tiny. Pretty sure they don't even have a Costco. Um, we are 566 miles into the trip. Left Boulder County, Colorado nine hours ago. They include a little bit of a layover, stop over, get out of the car, get some food, walk around in Amarillo. But we've been back on it. I think I've been on the road. Ooh, that was 110 miles ago. So I think I definitely skipped one of these. Anyway. We are moving. It is, temperature was up to 98 at one point uh, as we left Amarillo. It's down to 96. Hot, very hot. Uh, but it is really beautiful out and very green and we're starting to see trees. I hope you can see all that. Hopefully we're getting some camera resolution off the highway here and you can see what we're looking at. But there's trees. I think it's gonna get more and more trees. At some point, I do believe the Red River State Line between Oklahoma and Texas is over there somewhere on my left, not too far. I'd say 
within 15 or 20 miles. But uh, that's my best guess from looking at a Google map a day ago. I am on my way, probably going to stay in Wichita Falls tonight. I will catch up with you in a little while. Be safe, YouTube. YouTube, it is starting to rain. Hour 10. I'm only 15 miles out of Wichita Falls, Texas. Um, there have been warnings all over the radio. I got nowhere else to go but forward. I'm pretty sure there's a big old storm on my... There's one on my left over in Oklahoma that sounds terrible. And there's one to my right that looks terrible and it's starting to get me wet. And they were saying, I'm not sure which of these storms, because I'm getting different radio stations and I have no idea where I'm at, is saying silver dollar sized hail, vehicle damage, uh, damage to windows on houses, protect yourself, get indoors, possible tornado watch. So, uh, yeah, it's turned into quite the Thursday. Didn't anticipate this much adventure at the end of my trek. We are hour 10. Uh, we are 650 miles into this baby. Only 14 miles to go. Wichita Falls, I think, is where I'm going to hang out and spend the night. Well, only a couple hours from Wichita Falls, two hours, it looks like, a little bit less than two hours into Dallas. But I'm only going to Addison, so that's even easier. So, uh, yeah, I'll keep you up to date if this turns biblical weather on me. Uh, I'll give you an update with the video. I'll pull the camera out and let you see what I'm looking at. But uh, crossing my fingers, I got no options but going forward on this highway. Good morning, YouTube. I'm gonna be kind of quiet, even though the bird is really freaking loud. He's been loud all morning. Welcome to, well, it's Wendy's in the back of me, but it is a Flying J in Wichita. Slept in the van, or the, what do we call it, Vagabond? The, the, the V70 uh, camper in the back. I'm tired, I haven't had coffee yet. I'm headed to Starbucks, I already looked it up. There it is. There she is, parked here. She's already back in spurt mode. But there she is, all here, ready to go. I'll turn this around, we'll look at the camera together. There's the accommodations trucks in the back, way back there. Big trucks, there's an RV pulled in here last night, didn't even wake up for that. And then we get this. Flying J, it is very overcast. Very uh, dreary morning, 70 some degrees, supposed to be in the mid 90s today. I'm getting to Starbucks and I'm getting back on the road. Dallas, I think you're three hours away. I'm tired. Good morning, YouTube. I've had a couple sips of my coffee. I'm heading back towards Highway 287, just left Starbucks. I've got like two sips in me. I'm feeling sort of alive. It's kind of weirdo misty here. Look at that. See? It's like moisture just in the air, but not really falling anywhere. Kind of odd. Not normal for me, but whatever. Uh, heading out, we gotta go through this spaghetti tangle here and get over back. We're a little bit south of Highway 287 to find a Starbucks. But it looks like it's only like a couple miles to get back over there. 287 straight into Dallas, Texas. Says I'm two hours away, 140 miles. That's actually to Dallas proper, so I'm only going to Addison, so we'll be there pretty quick. Uh, that's all I got. It's early. Early, early, early. I think yesterday was what? Nine hours, ten hours? I lost track. So we'll just start over. Day two, hour zero. Just left Starbucks on the highway, Prancing Moose, packed back into sport mode. It was in caravan mode. I couldn't remember the word without coffee. And we are on the road and making time. Next stop, Dallas. All right, I'm out, YouTube. Be safe. Have a good uh, Friday early morning when you're neck of the woods. Welcome to hour two, day two, hour two, or we've already finished one hour, I guess, so we are just starting hour two on day two. We have left Decatur, Texas, um, hit a Starbucks, so that today, day two is a tour to Starbucks. Started with Starbucks in Wichita, had to drive a couple miles from the Flying J truck stop, 
Got my morning Starbucks. Before I can talk, I'm feeling a little bit better already. On coffee two, hit Starbucks in Decatur. We are now on Highway 380, heading east. This takes us, instead of 287, going all the way into Fort Worth and Dallas proper, we are heading across, straight east, across the north side. I think we're gonna go in through Denton and then um, over to Addison, where I am staying. Um, yeah, and there's a Starbucks right by the hotel, so that's about an hour away. This is literally tour to Starbucks. First start, one hour in, and two hours, we will be at a new Starbucks in Addison. That's the city. God, this all runs together. But anyway, we are having fun. A little bit of nasty-ass construction to go from 287 to 380 in Decatur. Uh, Waze wanted to get me off on a exit. It was actually closed, but it worked out really well because I went ahead to the next exit, and that's where Starbucks was. So it's uh, more of the uh, Forrest Gump life continues. I will continue on, excuse me, I have the hiccups. I ate a little sausage, egg, and cheese Sammy and my have my second Starbucks. And uh, we, we're gonna continue on this. I'm still waking up. We have uh, 49 miles to go, 56 minutes. And we are in Addison, Texas. Be safe, YouTube. All right, YouTube, I am in Addison, Colorado. It is on my car right now, 110 degrees. Uh, I think it's like 90 something just pavement concrete radiation heat is one but well, just dropped to 108 now that we're moving Woo! the engine is sensing some warmth it is hot it's going to be a uh, what i call a weight loss weekend running soccer games got really close to you there looking for traffic um running soccer games in the heat for a week so yeah this is gonna be fun i now need food All right, YouTube, it is early, 5.51 on Monday morning, the 26th of June. Oh, I'm going the wrong direction. I need to go the other way. Ah, this will work. I know how to get out of here. Um, I am leaving Frisco, Texas at the Toyota Soccer Center Comfort Suites. You can hear my voice is very different. It's actually dark outside, so uh, yeah, it's not kind of, not creepy in here. It's just dark and early. Heading to Starbucks, of course. I am heading home. It's been an event. I worked Saturday the uh, 17th, two games, fourth official and an AR1. Sunday, I worked an AR1 and a ref. Monday, I worked a ref again and an AR1. Tuesday, I worked an AR and a ref and was selected to work the finals as a finals referee. So that meant I was gonna be in a special group um, of elite at the tournament to work the semifinals and the finals. And went home super excited, thrilled for that. Um, this is a big deal. These are future professionals in the MLS next. And this is their national championship for four age groups. So I was super excited about that. Woke up Wednesday, sick. Hence the raspy voice <clears throat> had, um, did not feel well, hint, hint, and had a very sore throat and woke up with chills, was sleeping in a hoodie and my sweatpants all night. So I had to back out of my game assignment on Wednesday, which would have been like the quarterfinal round. Um, Thursday would have been a rest day for me. I was still sick. Friday, I was still sick. I missed a referee assignment for a U17 semifinal. Saturday was a rest day for me. Sunday, I made it back, barely. Uh, I made it back into the group. I had um, isolated separately at a different hotel from the finals referee group that all moved to the comfort suites or right by the stadium. Um, I stayed at my original hotel isolated so I wouldn't get the group sick. And I drank, I think I drank eight liters of Pedialyte before I got transferred over to the new hotel when I felt better. So, um, yeah, I went to a clinic, I was tested, no COVID. I went to the, the clinic, tested me no for strep. I uh, just had a really bad, some sort of respiratory virus and just had to hydrate and cross my fingers that I could get through it. 
huge, huge thank you for the um, Professional Referee Organization Pro uh, coaches who were here, as well as the event uh, referee organizers, um, officials management group for not giving up on me while I was sick and isolating at a different hotel. Um, just giving me the opportunity, can he make it back? Um, I am forever grateful that they gave me that opportunity. Um, I am blown away that I made it through that match. It was when I arrived at the stadium 30, 40 minutes before the match, it was 83 degrees at 6.15, 6.30 in the morning. It was shocking how hot that was. Um, it is right now 85. It's even warmer. I'm happy to be going home. Um, yeah. Uh, I worked that match from the warm-ups of the match to the recovery drink at the end of the match. One match, I drank four, over four liters of water because they handed me two of uh, those little uh, water bottles as well um, during the water breaks. Four-minute water breaks. It was so hot, um, even in the morning like that. Uh, this, this was brutal. This was a shock to the system. Um, definitely builds good fitness um, and gets you, gets you lean quick. Uh, but you got to drink so, so much water. But I'm so happy I made it through it. It was a great match. I was on the U19 final between uh, FC Delco out of uh, Pennsylvania, Eastern Pennsylvania. And they played against New England Revolution, which I believe are out of Boston, if I remember correctly. Uh, that's the MLS franchise. Um, academy team. So um, that went really well. I'm super happy about it. Today I am driving home. I'm going to see if I can do this in one push depending on how I feel. I got the GoPro mounted up. I'm at Starbucks. Going to grab the Americano. All right, YouTube. I am rolling out of Starbucks. I have two Americanos and a Sammy. Breakfast Sammy. So I am pulling out of Starbucks and I believe this is Frisco, Texas, just north of Toyota Soccer Stadium in the Toyota Soccer Center. This is, uh, I'm a little slow this morning. Cold is hitting me. You can hear the raspy voice. This is, uh, El Dorado Boulevard and the North Dallas Tollway, I think, over here on my right, which I think we're going to go underneath and stay on. Yes, we are staying on El Dorado. Hopefully, we're going to cross this big, huge lake. And there's a toll bridge over the top of it. So, oh, I got cash, so it'll be all right. Um, yeah, that's the North Dallas Tollway right here. And we are going to go straight. So, never been up here. New lands to me. This is the only part of the strip I haven't done before. So, we'll see what happens. Oh, I'm going really fast to slow down. All right. I'm going to let you go, YouTube. I'm tired. I'm going to film going across that giganto lake. I think it's called Louisville Lake. L-E-W-I-S-V-I-L-L-E -L -L -E or something like that. Not Louisville, like where I live. L-O-U-I-S-V-I-L-L-E -L -L -E, or Louisville. People they say in Kentucky, but in Colorado it's Louisville. All right, I'm out of here. I'm bored. I'm tired, and it's an early start to the day. I got 12 hours to go. Oh, wow. I didn't realize this was coming up that fast. Check Three this miles. out. Turn right on South Stevens Freeway. The giant bridge across the giant lake. Wow. We do not have this in Colorado. No giant long bridges to anything. All right, YouTube, I'm raspy still. <clears throat> I can clear it, but it doesn't get any better. Um... We are hour one. I'm in, I think this is Decatur, Texas. Um, coming up here, about ready to get to Highway 287, which I will be on forever. Um, I gotta give credit. I'm hoping it lasts forever, but while in Dallas on this trip, I discovered 88.1 The Indy, which I believe is some sort of like uh, nonprofit radio station. That is phenomenal. I wish we had that in Colorado. I'm hoping it lasts. I'm going to keep it on 88.1 until it goes away. That's how good it is. Exit um, right to US 81 North, US 287 North. Yeah. I'm not sure. That's south. Where is north? Here it is. Ooh, this is sketchy. <coughs> oh my God, my throat hurts. All right. In 900 feet, That's all I got. Turn left. Then turn left. Make a U-turn. What? Make a U-turn on US 380 East. What? No fucking way. In 800 feet, take
Take exit 3A, US 287 North, Vernon, Amarillo. This is the road I came in on. Why does it want me to go somewhere else? What the hell happened here? No, Continue this is straight it. for one hour to exit 3A, US 287 North, Vernon, Amarillo. All right, Waze. I'm glad you got that YouTube because Waze was a little bit fucking confused right there because I'm on the road it wanted me to be on and it thought I needed to do a U-turn for some reason. All right, I have no idea what that was all about, but I'm gonna continue on this adventure. All right, two hours, still got a raspy voice. I am in Wichita Falls, Texas, and the temperature's gone down. At one point, it was 79 back there. It is now 81, eight o'clock central time, heading home. Gotta stop. In 5.7 miles, take exit 3A, US 287 North, Vernon, Amarillo. Right, thank you very much. Um, I think I'm gonna hit the, I'm gonna hit a gas station. I'm gonna find a car wash. The Prancing Moose is filthy. I'm gonna get it cleaned up and I'm gonna find my way home. I think there is a, I just hated that Flying J, so it's gotta be up here somewhere. But yeah, I'll stay at the Flying J and then, if I can find it, I think I'm on the same highway. Grab a car wash, get the car cleaned up. Didn't realize how dirty it was until I got sunny on here driving home. And then I'm gonna drive on home. I'm tired and I'm raspy voice, so that's all you get. All right, be safe, be safe, YouTube. Hello, YouTube. Hour three, nine o'clock Central Time, somewhere in North-ish Central Texas, I guess. I don't even know what to call this rest area. There we go. It is the. Hardeman County Safety Rest Area. That'll put you, that'll, that'll tell you where I'm at. Uh, yeah, 86 degrees, voice is still not improving. I'm on my second Americano. Still trying to find a car, Watch car out. wash. Watch vehicle on shoulder ahead. Haven't found one that's close to the highway, but I'll hit one here soon or I'll find one in Amarillo. Um, actually, totally missed the Flying J because right when I turned off you guys, that was the exit. So completely missed that one, so we'll have to figure something out something else. I actually hit a rest area right after that. But I do need to find a car wash and clean this thing up. It's a little it's a little bit fuzzy. Um, that's all I got. I'm tired. Alright, YouTube. I did find a car wash right on the highway. Got the car cleaned up, and as you can see, there's been a bunch of bugs, but at least the silver car is not fuzzy. Uh, my voice is feeling a wee bit better. Finishing off the last of my second Americano. <clears throat> and I think I'm about 85 miles outside of, or 85 miles from meeting up with Interstate 40, which puts me within probably right about 100 miles of Amarillo. Um, I am 260 miles into this baby. Hour four, cruising right along. All right, that's all I got. YouTube bonus feature. I hope you can see these clouds. That is really, really cool. It's kind of interesting. It's uh, 82 degrees, five hours and 40 minutes into this trip, 307 miles out of Frisco, Texas. I think I'm about, uh, what was it? 40, 50 miles from Amarillo. So this is looking kind of cool, kind of neat. Looks like it's gonna rain. Hopefully I'm on the other side of it before it happens. Welcome back YouTube. We are in hour five. <clears throat> the raspy voice continues. Um, I am now about nine miles away from Interstate 40. I think that puts me about 19 miles out of Amarillo. 336 miles. Hour five is done. 11 o'clock Central Time. I'm uh, cruising. Um, interesting note, those, uh, that bonus footage of clouds. <clears throat> Excuse me. Drove past that first branch and then intersected another one just like it. And now it's clear as can be. Or kind of hazy up there, but it doesn't look like it's going to rain anymore. Interesting day. That was the kind of a cool double band of clouds. I haven't seen something like that all wavy underneath. All right. Be safe out there, YouTube. Hope you're having fun. All right, YouTube. Ah, uh, it is uh, hour six. <clears throat> I am about what are we 12 miles north of Amarillo stopped in Amarillo got gas at the pilot gas station or truck stop whatever the hell that thing is ate at Wendy's got gas now I'm heading north on 287 look at these hills this is pretty so I'm now about 
oh, what are we, 375 miles into this trip. <clears throat> Hour five, it's 86 degrees, and my voice is getting worse, and I'm only talking to you. So uh, this isn't uh, looking good for the rest of the way home. Uh, that's all I got. I gotta save this voice for some more mileage. Welcome back, YouTube. The voice is still with me. Pushed it. Actually, it's exactly hour seven. We are now 453 miles since I left Frisco, Texas. And I think I'm done with Texas. Should be right up here somewhere. Springfield's in Colorado. That was that sign. Oh, there it is. Right there. I am in the state of Oklahoma, leaving the north northern panhandle of Texas and crossing the western panhandle of Oklahoma. All right, YouTube, be safe. I got to save some voice. All right, YouTube land. I have made it approximately 41 miles. And if I did this right, I think it's hidden right behind the truck. You can't see it. Oh, there it is. Welcome to colorful Colorado. Yeah, baby, Colorado, it's been a while. Oh, quick reminder to the Oklahoma Chamber of Commerce. Yet another trip across that 41 mile stretch of Panhandle and I didn't stop to spend one single Boulder liberal penny on the Donald J. Trump Highway. Own it, be proud, Oklahoma. All right, YouTube, that's eight hours today, and the voice is barely hanging on. Cough drops are barely helping. It's not coming back. Um, just passed something that said Sand Arroyo, 4,300 feet or 4,400 feet, something like that. Yeah, baby, we're climbing. Um, I have 280 miles to go. I am, what are we, 515 miles into this thing. And now the goal is to get head north on to Highway 287, get to Lyman, get on I-70 and get as close to Denver as possible. Oh gosh, come on cars, don't kill each other. Wow, that was scary. Glad you got to see that with me. Um, and get as close to Denver as possible before the afternoon thunderstorms roll over those mountains that come out here on the high plains and wreak havoc. This is uh, a little bit of Tornado Alley for Colorado and hailstorms. And I don't want to be out here in the late afternoon. So right now there are some big clouds forming above some haze over there on the left. Can't see any mountains yet, but that's all I got. I'm gonna save the voice. Be safe, YouTube. All right, YouTube, we are hour nine. I still have a voice. Uh, very froggy sounding, very echoey even to my own ears. But I feel pretty good. I actually, this is the best I've felt since last Wednesday when I woke up sick. So uh, 100 miles to go and I'm on I-70 just outside of Lyman. I am looking at 215 miles to home. That's looking at like, that's like what, three hours? Yeah, baby. Three hours to go. Welcome back YouTube. Still have a bit of voice. It is our, oh my goodness, I don't even know what this is, our 10? Wait a minute, it is three o'clock Colorado time. That's hour nine plus one, hour 10. Um, I am 27 miles from I-70, almost to Lyman, Colorado. Uh, about 140 miles to home. I'm looking at just under two hours and I'm back in Boulder County. Look how beautiful this is right now. Water in that little uh, meandering stream through the meadow back there on the right. Everything's green. They must have been having a lot of rain out here on the, on the, on the uh, high plains. I know Boulder has, I know Denver has, but this is more green than I've ever seen it. I mean, we're almost at July, it's lush. Really, really pretty. Beautiful blue skies, some clouds coming over those mountains over on the left. I can't quite see mountains yet. I haven't seen any mountains, I'm kind of hidden behind haze. Hopefully I don't run into one of these big, Wicked Thunder Boomers, we'll find out. All right, stay tuned. All right, YouTube, I have big news. I got to Lyman, Colorado. <clears throat> and I just did a search on Waze. Turned out if I go 45 more miles to Bennett, 
There's a Starbucks. It's not a real Starbucks. It's in a King Supers or a Kroger. Um, but it's Starbucks. So I did get an Americano. And I got to put a shout out to Howard Schultz at Starbucks. Time to close the stores. Teach everybody again how to make a good Americano. They just handed me a cup. I said I like a little bit of cream. I like it darker. She literally made the Grande Americano was one third cream. It was barely tan. I, she handed it to me and I said, I asked for very little cream. Like that's got cream's gotta be the most expensive thing in a Grande Americano. You gotta be losing money on this cream. It's happening everywhere. Retrain them. If you order them, if someone's ordering an Americano, they want a stronger than a coffee. They want it strong. Don't water it down. Don't cream it down. Oh my God. All right. <clears throat> but things are looking up out here on Eastern Colorado. It's not the badlands that I always thought it is. It's uh, almost civilization. Bennett, Colorado has a Starbucks at King Supers. Kind of changes everything on traveling through here. So um, I am now 50 miles from home. I have been driving 11 hours and almost 20 minutes, something like that. But I did swing into King Supers there. So I went a little bit over on that hour uh, to get to that King Supers, but my throat feels much better. It doesn't sound better, but it feels better. <clears throat> anyway. I'm cruising home. I will see you again. I'll turn you on when we get to my beautiful mountains. And if you look ahead, underneath that big puff of clouds straight ahead, you can see the outline faintly of mountains. There's a shadowy outline back there through the haze. There they are, all the way across the horizon. All right. I'll show you my mountains in a little bit. Be safe. All right, YouTube. I'm not making this up. I left Frisco, Texas at about six o'clock this morning and I have just rolled through the exit for Louisville. I'm gonna drive up here to Boulder and get a good look at my favorite mountains with you. <clears throat> Losing my voice still. It is now five o'clock in the Denver metro area. That puts me making this trip point to point, Frisco to Boulder in 12 hours, including stops. That's pretty impressive. I'm pretty happy with that, especially when I'm getting over being sick and I lost my voice. Oh, there's a policeman right there. We're gonna go to the speed limit. Well, everybody is anyway. Um, not only that, but the other quirky thing about this is I left Frisco, Texas this morning when I got up at 5.30, 5.45 to go to Starbucks. It was exactly 86 degrees Fahrenheit. As I'm cresting the overlook right here into Boulder Valley, it's 85, one degree cooler than Frisco, Texas was in the dark. Yeah, there's the mountains. So this is not pollution. I think this is more the Canadian fire smoke moving in because it doesn't look brown when I look off in the distance. This just looks like haze. Um, you can barely, s s I can see the shape of my mountains, but you can't really see the flat irons there on the left. So we are pointing straight into Boulder Canyon, that little lump to the left of this pickup truck. That is Flagstaff. To the left of that, the two big ones, those are the Flatiron Mountains, uh, Bear Peak and Green Green Mountain, or Bear Peak and Green Peak, I think. Bear and Green, something like that. It's, but it's not Green Mountain near Golden. There's another Green Mountain. It's not nearly as beautiful as that. But look at this. Thought I'd drive over the hill, show you the valley. I'm about ready to go home. I am tired. I can now turn this off. I have been, uh, after four days of trying to recover from being sick and then literally stepping into 90 to 105 degree temperature to run a line on the national championship for the U19 marquee event, straight out of bed to that event. Made it through it, slept all yesterday, woke up today, my voice is disappearing rapidly. Survived driving home 12 hours. I'm gonna go home to my own bed. I'm gonna see hot mama Sita. She's driving home. I might actually beat her. She um, we might pull into the driveway at the same time. She's driving home from Santa Fe, New Mexico from an art show this weekend. Um, I get to hug my wife, hug hot mama Sita, see my two daughters when they get home from working at Waterworld today. What a, what? It's been 12 days. I get to sleep in my own bed and to be honest, I'm not getting out of it till probably noon tomorrow. I'm turning this off. The energy level is going to go to zero and I need recovery. I need to just 
catch up on some energy. All right, be safe, YouTubes. That's it. Dallas, Frisco to Denver, Boulder, 12 hours. Be safe.